Hello and welcome to episode 93 of Inbound Agency Journey. This is Andrew, co-host here on the podcast. Very excited to have you here today where I bring you a conversation with John Aiken, who is the uh, founder of Web Canopy Studios. John has a really cool story uh, just about getting started slow, getting the agency up and running, but then really leveraging some creative tactics to get new business in the door. The This whole idea around introductory services, both discovery projects and some pretty innovative things they're doing inside the HubSpot marketplace when it comes to COS web design templates. So really cool interview with John. You are going to love it. Before we jump into that interview, today's episode is brought to you by Do Inbound. Do Inbound is project and process management built just for you, the inbound agency professional. When Gray and I started this company three years ago, we started it out of a pain that we felt at Guava Box where we wanted to grow our agency and scale our agency, but we knew that we as the owners were rate limiting factors. If we wanted to scale effectively, we had to get things out of our minds, documented down in repeatable processes and put it all in a system that helps us keep track of our client campaigns and do it all in a way that'll scale the agency. And so that was the vision for Do Inbound. And today, Do Inbound is serving inbound agencies on six continents. We have over 70 agencies on the platform and would love for you to be one of them if it's a good fit for you. Head over to doinbound.com. You can check out all the different features, the trainings, the templates, everything that goes into it. Even chat with our man, Ryan, over there who can answer any questions that you might have. Without further ado, folks... Here we go. Welcome to Inbound Agency Journey. This is the show where inbound agency leaders share the strategies, shortcomings, and successes they've experienced in their journey toward building their dream agency. Now, here are your hosts, Andrew and Gray. All right, John, welcome to Inbound Agency Journey. So excited to have you on the show here today, man. Um, can you kind of introduce yourself to the listeners here, share a little bit of your background and, and how you got to be where you are today? Yeah. Hey, Andrew. Um, thanks for having me. Um, I'd be happy to talk a little bit. I don't know kind of what, what level of detail you want to know, but I'll dive in um, and just kind of word vomit, and then you can stop me and, and ask other questions if that's cool too. That sounds perfect. Okay. Um, yeah. So um, uh, I started Web Canopy Studio in 2010, um, and the company was really um, not unlike probably most partners today. Like we started out doing um, a lot of local website development for small companies. Um, we're in Eastern Indiana. And there weren't a lot of companies doing website development in this area. Um, there were a few. Um, so it was, it was a nice way to get the business going, um, working with you know a lot of restaurants, a lot of insurance agencies, a lot of really small businesses that just needed a better presence because they were only working with companies like GoDaddy or uh, Weebly and, and kind of the one-off website things that um, they kind of wanted a little bit more custom feel to it. So that's, that's where the company got started. Um, like probably similarly to what most people have experienced to have started in that realm. Um, we ended up hitting a ceiling pretty quickly after tapping out the market um, pretty, pretty heavily, especially since we're, we're, we're about an hour and a half away from most larger urban areas. Um, I guess the, the ones that would be near us like Dayton, Ohio, Cincinnati, Ohio, Indianapolis. So we didn't really have uh, a lot of growth potential and the other issue was we had no scalability. Uh, so we were running into the, the issues of like, hey, I'm running this business. Um, we just landed this you know, $50,000 website project, which would be just a massive project for us. And I need to hire three guys to get this project um, through the finish line. It's going to take three months. And then after that three months, I've got nothing. And I'm yeah. going to I'm gonna have to say, I got to let you guys go. Uh, or I have to just, you know, bite the bullet and, and, you know, just try and figure out how I'm going to pay these people. And so that's when, when HubSpot, um, entered the picture and, uh, and we, we dove all into, uh, inbound marketing right around 2013 and signed on to the partner program in very early 2014. And the rest is history. Um, I mean, there's probably way more detail <laughs> that I could go into about our experience with HubSpot, but, um. Yeah, that's kind of how, how we got started and where the company came from. That's fantastic. Um, as you were, as you kind of hit that ceiling, um, walk us through just the conversations that you had, you know, with your team, with yourself about, 
how to tap into growth and how to change up the kind of the direction of the company in order to have a broader appeal. Um, you know, did, did you, what did that process look like for you and how long did it take to kind of fall into the track that you guys are on right now? Mm -hmm. It was, um, it was a pretty, it was a pretty easy transition once we saw the light. Um, I guess you could say from a, if you're looking at it from a religious standpoint, like we, we saw that, okay, look, we're stuck. Um, we're not breaking through the ceiling. Um, we have to, there's gotta be something else that we could, that we could do. We started experimenting like, Hey, do we need to get into doing, uh, app development? Do we need to like totally branch off and create web canopy studio as a completely different, maybe it's a, not even website development, maybe it's something else. Um, and so once, once we started looking into HubSpot and really getting involved in the inbound methodology and we're talking to, we're talking to, um, as a team about like, Okay, ongoing retainer development, starting small, starting with something that is easy for our clients to to latch on to. How, do, how does that help us? Everybody really got involved, and, and I say everybody. We were only a team of three, including me at that point in time. Um, and so the, the, it, was, it was a pretty easy transition. Okay, but what I'm hearing right away is like you're collaborating with your core team. You're not trying to you know, make decisions and then say, hey, guys, here's where we're going. Follow me. Yeah, I always collaborate. Um, I've always been uh, a fan of collective decisions, um, bringing them to the table. The last thing I want is for the team to feel like I'm leading them in a, in a direction that they're not comfortable going in. Um, I mean, that being said, we did have one of our employees at the time, um, after we got into the inbound process, ended up leaving. Um, and then we were a team of two. Um, okay. And then there's like this entire story of, of how we got to Diamond inside HubSpot. So I don't know how, how where you want to go or how deep you want to dive into that. But um, yeah, I yeah. would love to hear about that transformation <laughs> kind of in, in two ways. Like, number one, how were you able to to kind of hit the ground running? Because it's like you're into your third year now with HubSpot. Is that right? Yeah. 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 I mean, that's pretty. I mean, by some folks, that's pretty quick growth up to diamond. So how did you go from just a two person team? How did you decide who to hire to get you there? And like, what kind of change did you need to implement in your processes in order to get where you are today? Great question. Um, so, so we had a wild ride actually. Um, and we, I mean, it's just now starting getting even crazier. Um, when we started into HubSpot, and so we, we're visually seeing this picture go and saying, okay, look, I can see growth happening. I can see if I set these, this framework in place for a retainer model and, and working with companies that I can now say, okay, I know a really solid projected income for the next six to 12 months. So I know once I bring on a new, new retainer, then boom, I have the ability to hire and I have that stability for the team um, to keep, keep them on board. And I don't have to worry about what happens when that project goes away? Because ideally we're servicing them really well. They're really happy. We keep them on as a retainer and we move forward from there. Um, the issue was I was horrible at selling and I didn't know it. Um, I okay. was horrible at it. And um, I mean, it's just, just like, you know, starting a small business, you don't really think of all the different things that you need to learn. And if I would have gone back to college knowing where I'm at now, I would have like just focused on completely different uh, classes to take, um, you know, but, um, I was just, I was horrible at running a sales process. And so it honestly took us, uh, 18 months inside HubSpot before we made our first sale of the HubSpot platform. We were so close to giving up and not renewing our HubSpot contract, um, because it wasn't working for us. And that's what, well, that was our impression. We said, it's not working. We're not landing clients doing HubSpot inbound. We could land some clients, but couldn't get them to buy into HubSpot. Okay. Um, so we were doing um, inbound marketing and just kind of like piecemealing different things together with some different softwares. And um, it was going okay. We did a, we still did a ton of website development, um, but, uh, and kind of the one-off work. But really what I spent that year and a half doing was working very, very closely and hands-on with our channel account manager from HubSpot. And I probably drove her crazy with all the different calls and the trainings and um, running through sales cycles with different companies over and over and over again, only to get them all the way to the end of the sales funnel and they fall out. Um, and it was so frustrating and so 
time consuming and just draining on me that it, it was uh, it was to the point where we were like, maybe we shouldn't do this. Maybe we shouldn't. I just it's been going for 16, 17, 18 months. It's it's time to just kind of back out. But I'll tell you what happened and um, why we started growing. So realistically, we went from untiered to diamond in less than 12 months um, because of a shift that we made. And um, that biggest shift that we made was um, something we should have realized a long time ago. Um, and it's number one, there, there's a couple things. Number one, um, our target market became a vertical. Um, who we wanted to pursue, like if I'm going out and I'm going to handpick companies that I want to work with, what kind of agencies or, or companies would that be? And the biggest one that we've focused on has been the SaaS industry. Um, it's gone really, really well. We've made some great connections. We've made great relationships. We've serviced those accounts really well. Um, it's a network that's that's really kind to the referral process, um, and we've we've and it's worldwide. And so we had a really good experience right out of the gate, just focusing and being able to talk that language with them. And um, the next thing was kind of tying in with the SaaS model. Um, shifting with Luke's process of growth driven design was a complete game changer for us because we had already been doing tons of website development. We had already been looking at how do we move retainer processes and, and what happens and, and how do we make that, that something that's valuable for us. So when we started adopting growth driven design as a process in our office, and then I started pitching that to clients, especially in the SaaS space. When you're pitching agile development to, <laughs> to software developers and makers of software, they're like, oh my gosh, light bulb. I totally get it. I know exactly what you're doing. So it made my ability to sell them on retainers much easier. Um, and so we landed some really key accounts um, right out of the gate, um, bringing them completely into HubSpot, bringing them into our services. Um, that was really helpful. Um, so that's, that's kind of where we're pursuing our target. There's another piece to this that has driven, um, basically just dumped a can of gasoline onto that whole process and that methodology. And that was our, um, our initiative in getting involved with the HubSpot marketplace. Um, we saw it as an opportunity because there were some really good talented companies putting things in there. Um, I'm thinking, uh, brand builder solutions. I really like some of the stuff they're doing. Niambo has always been putting just amazing content inside the marketplace, but we still found that there was a niche that was untapped that we could get into. And that was free templates inside the marketplace. Nice. Um, and so what, what we realized was, okay, when you're a new HubSpot user and you're coming on board, you're not really sure um, what to do or how to get started. You might be working with a consultant or, or somebody inside, maybe another partner. Um, but when you first get in, you're, you're amped up, like you're fired up. You're, you're just draining the videos. You're watching the trainings. You're doing the projects. You're getting certified. Um, and you're really, really fired up. So when it comes time to start developing things, you go to your landing pages to try and create a new one. And it's like a major letdown because it's, there's just not, there's not something there for you to work with. Uh, yeah. That's really valuable. And so it's, it's very fresh. It's something we experienced. It was very frustrating. Um, and then even from, we're a development background, we wanted to start making blogs right away, obviously to, to start creating content and the blog that came with HubSpot, um, it's standard. It's totally functional. It looks fine, but it wasn't where we wanted it to be. And it didn't match where we wanted our brand. And, um, we had one skinned and brought over obviously from the, uh, the migration process. And, um, but it still just wasn't where we felt we needed to be. So we realized, Hey, there are tons of companies out there, all these new clients that are coming onto HubSpot who are experiencing this exact problem. And this is an opportunity. And so what we did was we took some of the the best user experience templates that we have created. And, and by user experience, I mean someone who has no idea whatsoever how to design anything or how to develop any kind of um, uh, code languages, templates, anything like that. If they could just go in, open a template and have tons of resources that they can design and style their own templates however they want. Nice. Um, if we could do something like that, we will be able to start um, providing lots of value to companies. My goal at the time was maybe if we do this, we'll get it, we'll get, we'll build a bit of a name in the HubSpot community for Web Canopy Studio. Some people will start recognizing us. 
um, we'll maybe maybe we'll land a client from it. Who knows? Um, so we put in um, two really intuitive landing pages for free. We put in a a uh, pretty pretty cool looking uh, blog template for free um, and an email template for free, and then we combined it into and and if anybody's ever seen the HubSpot marketplace, the, those are called Prelude, Cadenza, Sonata, and Overture, and then we've grouped them all together into one that's called um, the Portal Starter Pack. So as soon as you get into HubSpot, you can now go to the marketplace, download this free Portal Starter Pack, and you have a blog ready to go, you have two different landing page styles ready to go, and you have an email ready for your uh, follow-up sequencing um, right out of the gate. Um, what we didn't realize what, was how many people would utilize this. So we put these in the first month, about 100 people downloaded them, and we said, whoa, that's a lot of people. We had 100 people download these. Um, the second month, we had 200 more people download these. And then we said, whoa, that's a, that's a lot of people are downloading these. That, that's, that's some damage we're making here. That's really cool. Hopefully something comes of it. And then by the time the third month came around, we had 300 people download them. It's 100 a month, 200 a month, and 300 a month. So we're up to whatever, 600? I don't know. Can't do math. Um, and so then I'm saying, in my mind, it, I, I had my own internal light bulb go off and say, look, from a marketing perspective, these people have already bought HubSpot. These people have already bought into the concept of inbound marketing. And they need help in some way, shape, or form, or they would not be in the marketplace in the first mm -hmm. place. And so that essentially takes a six-month-long sales cycle sometime down to two to three weeks. If we set up a good funnel and we set up a, a, something that's not scammy or spammy and we're proactive and really seeking value to add to these, uh, these companies and, and so a lot of times other partner agencies, um, we're averaging now, we get about 500 leads per month. Um, in the HubSpot marketplace of people downloading our templates. Um, we've set up a full support team uh, who is just there to not only do they get a free template from us, but we service that template completely for free. Um, if you have um, obviously anything, any kind of like custom additions or things that they'd want to make, um, they have to uh, pay for. But if they have questions or they can't figure out how to do something, we have documentation, we have a support team that answers uh, support requests, um, and we've turned that into um, its own, almost its own sales funnel, um, just dealing with, with support. But, um, so those leads have turned into you know, someone who's downloaded a free template we've sold a $100,000 retainer from, just from opening the door from them downloading a template talking to them, having them do some nurturing and some email sequencing, following up with us, um, and then building that relationship. We've sold lots of businesses um, in, in retainers. We've sold lots of one-off projects. Um, and we have we always have something new going on that's, um, that's kind of just something exciting for people to stay active or see what's happening or see what Web Canopy Studio is doing. Um, so I'm just totally word vomiting, Andrew. I'm so sorry. Um, no, but that's, dude. that's my story so far. <laughs> <laughs> that's perfect. And I like this because I'm seeing that you guys took, you kind of extracted something out of your current process because I'm, I'm sure that when you're designing a new website, you've got kind of a boilerplate that you're starting with at least cause you've learned these are great points of conversion. We want to have these kind of on different sites. You've extracted that out you've offered it for free almost as a part of your content marketing strategy here yes you know but it's it's elusive it's different it's not another pdf ebook out there that a hundred other people are using you've found a way to set yourself apart in a crowded space yeah that's one of the biggest uh probably the biggest takeaways that i had from this whole process and and as we're moving forward and creating new sources of of lead gen for us and when I brought, when I came into HubSpot, in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, lead gen. That's an ebook. That's a white paper. That's a checklist. That's a webinar. There's so much more than that. You can have free resources in different, different. I don't know, you know, like like services, or maybe you're creating products, or there's 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 just if you, if you can come up with a free resource that your target audience really really needs, that doesn't have to be you know, some checklist behind a landing page. Yeah. Um, there's, there's just, the more you can think outside of the box, the more applicable it's going to be for you. We, we have over 7,000 HubSpot users in our portal as leads to us um, that, that have interacted with us and engaged with us in different ways. 
Um, we even see people like we have a lot of partners who use our templates, our free templates to get their clients set up. And that's totally fine. Um, we've built some wonderful relationships with other partners, um, you know, providing consultation with them, providing resources for them, um, entering into retainers. Maybe they don't have a web development team and we've entered into retainers with them to help them reach their goals and move forward. Um, yeah, so I mean that's that's it's it's just kind of it's just kind of a unique situation for sure. That's fantastic. Um, well, I love that on the lead gen side. Can you take us back to that point where you guys were a two person team looking at HubSpot? Sounds like you say we got to double down if we want to make this thing work. Mm -hmm. um, how did you grow your team, John, and find the right people to put on the bus to fit this model that you're in right now? I have a secret. I have a top secret, but <laughs> I'll tell I'll tell everybody just because it's you, Andrew. Um, um, the best thing that I could advise any business owner is to utilize academia as much as you can and build relationships with the professors and the administration offices and the internship coordinators at the local universities um, in your city or, or nearby. Um, we're blessed, um, even in, in Indiana, where the, the, the largest city that, that we're close to is, is Richmond, Indiana. It's very small. It's maybe 30,000 people, if that. Um, and, but there's three, there's three universities here. There's, there's one um, fairly, fairly larger university, um, and then there's satellite campuses of other universities, other state schools, um, Indiana University, Purdue University, Ivy Tech, um, here in town. And um, we have built great relationships with them and with their internship coordinators. And so what we've done is we've set up a very solid internship program. So I have brought on interns and trained them in their internship process through, you know, whether they're doing Udemy courses to get up to speed on the code language that I need them to be prepped for, yeah. whether, whether they're doing HubSpot certification, inbound certification, growth driven design certification, um, and just getting them to do that for part of their day and then work on a project team for part of their day. Um, you know, maybe it's just 20 hours a week. Some, some students are doing co-op with us, so they're coming in full time um, uh, for an entire 40 hour work week, and they'll do that. We usually have at least one or two interns in the fall, in the spring, and in the summer. And what that has done is it's allowed us to pick kind of the cream of the crop who come and work for us. Because by the time their internship is completed, I want them to be at a place where I could hire them the next day, put them in a chair, and go on a project without me having to be like, okay, let's sit down for three months and build out your, here's your onboarding plan, here's your how we work, here's all the software we're using, here's what HubSpot is. Yeah. Uh, by the time they get ready, they're, they're, they're there and they're ready to go. So we've hired, um, we are currently a team of, of eight. We have one part-time person, seven full-time people. Um, I'm sorry, there's, there's nine. There's eight full-time people and one part-time person. Um, that part-time person is a, uh, a previous intern who worked over the summer, and I offered him a job to work for me during – um, his last year of school because he became almost invaluable to our team and the That's culture. Awesome. Yeah, and so he's got a job waiting on him in May. When he's done, he's, he does not have to worry about seeking employment. He's ready to go. And um, we've hired, let's see, one, two, three people that way from the internship program coming on board full time. Um, that's been the best source for us when you're looking for entry level um, or just doers, like you need someone in, in a chair to get work done. Um, we've had to put out, um, obviously, we, you know, we've needed project managers. We need people who are not intern level work. Um, and so we've had to seek, um, you know, different, different avenues. So, you know, we've done, um, I haven't spent any money. I kind of refuse to spend money to <laughs> hire somebody. Um, <laughs> So I have not done any like the recruiters or anything like that. Uh, we've just relied on our own inbound. Uh, we have a, we've just created a new section on our site, which is actually really, is kind of poor. Um, but it, it lists different positions that we're currently seeking, and um, we've had that alone has just been quite helpful to get people to to send applications to us. And then um, social media has been really key of, of sending that out, um, letting it kind of grow on its own, people sharing it. Um, and, and that, that kind of stuff. So that's, that's, a, so the two, sorry, a year and a half ago, let's say inbound, I think is probably a good starting point inbound of 2015. Uh, it would have been in September ish. 
um, right around Labor Day, we were a team of two full-time people. Um, and so in a year, maybe a year and a half, um, we've grown to a nine-person company. Um, we were untiered at that inbound. This year when we came to inbound, we were diamond. So um, it's, been, it's been moving really, really fast. That's awesome, John. I think it's inspiring to the people who – there's a large group of agencies out there that get fired up about HubSpot. They get inside. They consume all the training, but they're just waiting for that spark. They're waiting for that bit of momentum to kick in where they get that first sale or that second sale, and then they can kind of start moving from there. So to hear that you guys were were in there for 18 months before that first sale came through and that – you know, in at inbound fifteen, which was not that long ago, you guys were untiered, and now you're a diamond partner. That's in, mm-hmm. that's got to be inspiring for someone who's trying to, you know, just get the inspiration to keep pushing and keep going um, and keep grinding there. Yeah, I hope so. Like in that time frame, like I'll, I'll be completely honest. In that time frame of that eighteen months leading up to it, I didn't pay myself for six months. I didn't. I didn't take a check home because I needed my. We we were scraping, and I needed my employees to stay with me in that time, or I would have had to shut the doors. Uh, So every penny that came in, I'd pay software, I'd pay my insurance, I'd pay taxes, and I'd pay my employees and anything else that would come up. And I would, you know, I'd go home and I eat ramen noodles with my my wife, you know, like um, we were scraping, uh, scraping by. And it sucks, but it's the more motivation, I guess, to just be like, man, I see that I, I just, I fully believe in this process. Um, I see the value in it. Other people are clearly having great success in it. So what am I doing wrong or what, what am I, what do I need to be doing differently? And one of those things that really, what really jump started, um, that, and, and, and conversations with Luke Summerfield were huge. Um, just hearing him have the, have those ideas and, and how he talked through, um, processes of, of growth driven design. I was like, man, this is this is like next level stuff. And I'm older than Luke and I'm like looking up to Luke as, <laughs> as a leader for me. Um, but, but those kind of conversations and just saying like, look, you have to don't try and replicate what someone else is doing because it's not going to work. You have to take what someone else is doing and, and apply it, apply that methodology, I guess, and do something different with it. Um, and so I think I was trying to replicate the success of the media junctions and the square twos and, and just those, those real impact, those really great people that we looked up to and being like, oh, I can do this. I can do this. But it wasn't until we just started, we had to think different and find our own avenue. Yeah. Amen to that. Think different. Find a way to break yourself out of here. Um, apart from the crowd to kind of differentiate there. That's great. Um, um, I guess the last, the last area I want to chat about is – um, ongoing servicing. What, you know, you guys are, obviously you use web design to get people in the door with templates. Um, after you get their websites up and running, is, is GDD a lot of the ongoing retainer or do you, do you guys do more traditional um, inbound tactics to, to continue to move people down? What's the ongoing relationship look like with this client load right now? Yeah, we have both. Um, and we, we have some clients that are just inbound we have some clients that are just website, so growth-driven design. We have some clients that do kind of a mixture of both. Um, we switched to a points-based pricing model. So we actually we don't confine them to a set of deliverables. You are just hiring us for inbound marketing. If their website is on HubSpot, we don't do non-HubSpot anymore, by the way. Um, and that was a big, a big help for us. We don't even entertain WordPress sites. Um, so what's happened is we, with a points-based pricing model, we allow them to push their priorities um, as more of something we're engaged with instead of saying, here is what you're getting. You're getting three blog posts. You're getting one landing page. You're getting this and this and this. And letting them have a little bit more control and a little bit more say-so in the process. So we're saying, you, you have 500 points, let's say. You have 500 points this month. I recommend you allocate 430 of them this way, and here's how I would do it. And so we'll lay out a game plan for the next three months. And then um, you have these extra points every month. I want you to choose what is, what's the cause that you're looking at. Like what are you trying to get across? What, what is something you personally want us to work on to just take a different, a different direction than, than what we would tell you? Um, sometimes they say just do whatever you want. Um, sometimes they say <laughs> add, add more blogs. 
sometimes they're really adamant, like, oh no, I'm, I've got this conference. I've got a lot of stuff that I need help with. My team is swamped. What can you do? Can you help me with, with building um, a section of our site about this? Can we, can we look into analytics and start saying, what if we move stuff around on our pricing page? And um, so we, we do growth-driven design. We do inbound marketing. We do kind of a hybrid approach as well. I love this. Um, so from the, from the point side, are you presenting clients with like a menu of here's how you can pick and allocate these remaining points that you have? Or are they just kind of bringing up ideas and you say, yeah, we can do that or no, we can't? Yeah, full disclosure, I have no clue. I don't even, I don't even know what the best route to go is with that. We've experimented with not telling them what the points are. That didn't really go over well. Uh, we've yeah. experimented with showing them a full menu. That also didn't go over well because they now see like they want to negotiate the menu, right? So um, they want to start saying, well, if this is 35 points. What if it's just 30 points? And we're like, it's not exactly how it works. <laughs> um, so, um, it's, it's, we're still trying to, trying to fix that. Um, we didn't start the points based pricing until, um, September of 2016. So, um, it's still relatively new in our office. Yeah. Um, and I'm not hundred percent certain where it's going. Um, I know that we like it. It's been helpful for us. Our clients do see value in it. There's just that that fine line of how much do we allow them to be involved in that process of seeing the total points, or do we just say like you tell us what you want and we'll tell you how many points that is? Yeah, so, yeah. Okay, so you're still. I mean, that's another point. Like, don't get caught and don't never be happy where you are. Well, not don't be happy. Definitely be happy where you are, but don't be satisfied where you are. Like, keep moving forward and trying new things out. Because, you know, nothing's going to be perfect until you run through it and you give it a go. So yeah. thanks, for, thanks for just being honest there. That's awesome. Yeah. And then um, one, other, one other point or piece of advice that I would give that's been really, really valuable for us. Um, the concept of selling a $100,000 yearly retainer to a company will just shut the door automatically to so many businesses when they hear that that's what you're pursuing or, or maybe it's not that maybe it's just like a, you know, $60,000 or maybe it's like, maybe it's a $36,000 um, annual fee to you, um, you know, broken out over those, those 12 months. Um, so we have been able to combat that by breaking out introductory services. Um, and I would highly recommend that to, to other agencies like, um, breaking out a piece of your service that you can sell individually. For us, we've done a really, um, a really good job in buyer persona development and campaign outline. Um, it's not, a, it's not uncommon, uh, or, um, un, I don't know what the word is. It's, 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 it's similar to, um, what the, that marketing blueprint is by another agency. Yeah. Um, can't remember the name of that company, but they have a really genius concept with that. Um, we have our own tweak to it and, and make it a little bit different. We call it the foundry. Um, but we, we basically break out a conversion rate optimization workshop and we dive in with the clients. We do user testing. We do client interviews for them. We do message mining. Um, we do a content audit of every, all the pieces that they have. Um, and then we, we take that information. We compile a huge strategic report about their opportunities and their strengths and their weaknesses and their message hierarchy, and then we build a campaign for them. And we say, just in an outline format, and we say, this is, you know, we, we charge like 3,500 bucks for it. And we say, at the end of this exercise with us, you can have this outline, you have everything you need for the next three months, and you can go and build it. Or if you want to look at partnering with us and seeing how we can collaborate, here's, here's what we're doing. Um, and we show them, you know, proposal at that point. And so... Um, that has gone really, really well. It's made the, um, the sale much different. Obviously we're still trying to close the, the full retainer up front, but once we get pushed back and we start introducing the idea of what if we take a step back and let's just look at now let's look at just a, just a one month engagement. This is what we're going to set up for you. It's a one-off service. You can have it and take it. Um, or we can work together. Yeah, that's awesome. And anyone, I encourage you if you're listening Go to Web Canopy Studios website. Check out the Foundry video. It's on the homepage there. You can click through to find it. It's pretty sweet. Um, and I love just posi I love the positioning that you guys roll into that, John. Of this is, um, you really put the value on strategy and the value of paying for that strategy up front. And I think that's 
what a lot of agencies historically have struggled with. They kind of come in and give away the farm uh, before they even know the client really well, to be honest. They don't have the information um, to really put a good plan together. But if you guys are coming in, you're mining messages, you're actually talking to their customers, you're sending out surveys, you're really gathering yeah. a lot of customer intel to position yourself to create a good marketing plan that's going to you know, connect, with those pro- connect with those prospects and you know, move them down the funnel. Yeah, yeah. I mean, th- thank you. It's, it's been very helpful um, to us. And it was another kind of um, thing like, I don't know why I wasn't doing this a year ago. I feel like I've <laughs> wasted so much time. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, we've covered so much ground here, and I thank you so much for coming on and just being open and honest and sharing you know, where you guys are, the lessons you've learned along the way. I've got four pages of notes sitting right here, so cool. I'm, I'm really <laughs> excited about it. Um, if anyone's listening, they've got a follow-up question or they want to get in touch or they want to talk to you guys about partnering as a, mm-hmm. you know, the, the web design extension of their agency, mm-hmm. what's a good way that they can get in touch with you guys? Yeah, you can fill out the contact form on our website um, or just simply email me at john at webcanopystudio.com. Awesome. Well, John, thank you so much for your time and coming on and sharing your inbound agency journey. Awesome. No problem. I, it's been fun. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you for listening to Inbound Agency Journey. You can find the show's notes for today's episode at doinbound.com slash podcast. Again, that's doinbound, all one word, dot com forward slash podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, head over to iTunes to subscribe or leave us a review of the show. Until next time, remember, life is a journey. Keep moving forward.